I tried to get a little bit of footage, man, but they work too damn fast, man. I can't keep up with them. These Mexicans definitely know what they're doing. So anybody ever come to Laredo, I highly advise you, let them talk the load. Say that, hey, just go ahead and pay the $20, man. Yeah, I've been missing the action for a little bit. I've been working hard. I just want to show y'all this truck stop, man. I think this now, I don't even think no fuel out of this work, but I wouldn't use them anyway. It's a country ass truck stop. This is exit, exit uh, 17 in Alabama on 59 North, exit 17. That driver beside me, he just said, yeah, it does look a little creepy out here. I said, yeah, it does, man. I think I might put my cowboy hat on when I walk inside this place. Crazy. What up, gang? I'm back. I ain't put a video up in, uh, what, about two weeks? I've been in contact with, with a lot of guys, though. A lot of guys that uh, I chat with on the regular. A lot of, lot of guys. I, I've, been, I've been talking to people. But, uh, and let me tell y'all, man, since the last time I put up a video, uh, when I left out of Laredo, I, I took some uh, tra tractor frames. That's what it was, tractor frames. I took them to uh, Freightliner, Springfield, Ohio. Uh, that's that's probably the, uh, that's the last video I put up. But since then, I went up. I went up to uh, Springfield, Ohio. It's like a fifteen hundred mile run. Went up there. It was supposed to be a dropping hook. I went up there, dropped that off on a Sunday. It's supposed to be there Monday. And, I, and my last, like my last three loads, I've been getting them there a day early. So I mean, I really been running pretty hard, like running my whole clock out. Ten hour break, right back on it. So yeah, I really haven't had time. But uh, I was going to make a little video when I was dropping that off, but I got sidetracked and all that because, like I said, it's supposed to be in the dropping hook. But they ended up not having any 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 empty trailers out there at Springfield, Ohio. I dropped it on a Sunday. Then um, they told me to come back the next day, see if I can get my trailer unloaded. So I dropped it. Bob tailed Walmart about seven miles down the road, spent the night, ate at the Golden Corral. Bob tailed back in the morning, went inside the front office, talked to those people, and that was like, well, your trailer ain't gonna be unloaded till. Well, they had another melting trailer already there. That one was in front of mine. They wasn't gonna unload that one until Thursday. It was Monday, if I ain't say it, it was Monday. So they wasn't gonna unload the other melting trailer till Thursday. And my trailer was going to be after that. So, called dispatch, told them what's going on. Uh, they were like, we're going to make some phone calls. We'll call you back. About 30 minutes later, they sent me a Qualcomm message. <clears throat> told me to deadhead uh, Mosery to the Mosery terminal, pick up an empty trailer. So, that was like a 220-mile deadhead uh, down at the Mosery. Went to Mosery. I met up with my boy, The Formula, <laughs> on Instagram. Uh, him, another guy named Anonymous One. I think that's his name. Anonymous One. Uh, I didn't know his real name, but The Formula, uh, Jason Buchanan. Shout out Jason Buchanan. He's in Tulsa right now, waiting on a trainer. But. I want to give a real big shout out to my other dog. I was in my sleep. I was actually in Laredo that night. That Thursday night. I was in a sleeper berth, laying in my laying in my bed. My buddy Shaq uh texted me. He said, go look at the Melton Truck Line orientation video for the new hires. I was like, alright. Went and checked it out. Looked at it. My boy Zach uh gave a shout out to his uh wife and his family. And then he went, then he gave another shout out to uh, a YouTuber named Nice Visions. Shout out, Mr. Zachary Powell. Hey, you the man, bro. You the man. 
Shout out my boy Danny Haig. I was coming uh coming back up 35. I was coming back up 35 going back north. I seen a mountain coming the other way. I seen the driver sticking his arm out the window like that, pointing at me. As soon as I seen that, as soon as I seen that seen him, I said, I know that's him. That's Danny. Shout out Danny Haig, man. Shout out all the new mountain drivers. Shout out my boy 601. What was it, Nick 601? Came over from Boy Brothers. He did his orientation in Birmingham. Shout out Nick. Yeah, man. Got it. Got it. Got it. Hey, I'm glad. I'm glad my little videos, you know, influencing y'all, man. You know, come on over to the to the flatbed game. You know, hey, it make, it makes me. Hey, hey, when I seen the YouTube video with Zach, talking about, I, I almost shared a tear. I, I did. I shared like three tears. I said, man, that, that that was special right there. So shout out my boy Zach, man. But anyway, that's about about all my shout outs that I got. Shout out my boy Shaq over there at Swift. Pushing pushing the drive vans. Shout out my dog, my truckers keeper. Went back to US Express. My boy Juan, yeah, he over there at US Express too. He on a target dedicated route. Home every night. But anyway. <coughs> I got a load right now. I got some, uh, I don't know what it is, man. I think it's some air conditioner parts or something. I think that's what it is. Some little rubber hoses. Uh, it's like 66 pieces. I just know it's 66 pieces because I looked at the bills. Like some little, 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 little rubber pipes or something. Whatever it is, going to load distribution. I got like a... Uh, I got like 800 miles left right now. It was a 1,600-mile run. I left out of the radar on Thursday. Today's Saturday. So I did about... I did about 800 miles. I did 600 a day. No, I did about 900. I did 600 a day, 606 a day. Yesterday, I did 593. And tomorrow, I might not, I might not get... I'm, a, I'm a guessing I might get about... I'm gonna aim for 600 tomorrow, but I might not get it because I only got. Let me see. Let me check my clock. Let's see what we're working with. I might. I might get. I don't know. I, might, I probably won't get 600 tomorrow because I got to deal with traffic. I got to go up through Chattanooga. Okay, I got an hour 41 minutes. Yeah, I am running off recaps. I got an hour 41 minutes on my 70 right now, and then tomorrow I got 10 hours coming back. So yeah, I have 11 hours I can run tomorrow. And then Monday, I got seven hours, 54 minutes coming back. But I already plan on being close to the to the cosigne Monday. So I'll probably use about three hours out of that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say eight. So by the time I get empty, depending on how long that takes, I'll probably have like four or five hours left. And then I got home time scheduled for uh, Friday. I'm supposed to be home. So that's what I've been up to, man. Running off recaps. Busting my ass, getting shit done. Man, this little hood truck stop right here. Ain't hardly, I got here early, man, because I started running this morning about 2 o'clock. So I had to get out the road early. Yeah, I've been, I've been running at night. My, my boy Eric asked me, he sent me on Snapchat. He said he's been running at night a lot. Uh, yeah, I, I have been running at I I'm not going to say I've been running at night, but like early morning, like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Because... I, you know, I've been starting out early so I can get off the road early. And plus, I've been dropping all my loads like a day early. I wasn't supposed to be in Laredo till Friday, but I made it there Thursday. And even that Springfield dropping hook, I was supposed to be there. I was supposed to be there. Two, I mean, I had till Tuesday to drop that load off. Tuesday at like 2300 So I could have took a 35 reset in Laredo, but I didn't want to do that because I wanted to push it so I could get it on my paycheck. Uh, payroll cuts off on Monday, so that's why I pushed it and got it up there. But uh, that's yeah, that's about that's about all I've been doing. But something I want to say to y'all, man, I, I'm not saying to y'all, you know, my subscribers that really fuck with me, but I got some other people that's been uh, commenting on my uh, Melton Truck Lines, um, Melton Truck Lines, what's that? Yeah, the Melton Truck Lines orientation in Tulsa. I have been having a I've been having a little debate going on up there about 
about the damn hair follicle test. Yeah, it's yeah, they, it, that that debate's been going on for like like a whole month. That debate's been going on, you know. I'm not even in the conversation, but you know, since it's on my video, I mean, I, I get the comments popping up. Some guys been um going back and forth about that. I'm gonna give y'all my thoughts on that hair follicle test. I'm gonna give y'all my thoughts. And, and I, I erased most of the comments the other day when I woke up and I seen them. I erased most of them because, because number one, I'm I'm not going to promote any, any any negativity. I'm not going to promote anything, you know, of anybody trying to work around the system. You know, I'm I'm, I'm not. That ain't what I'm about. That ain't what I'm about right there. You know, I, I I like to keep a positive image. You know, it is what it is. That's just how I am. I mean. I always try to always try to think positive. So anything you know dealing with that, and it ain't nothing against guys that do drugs or do whatever you want to do. Cause you know, I might I might have smoked a little bit of weed back in my day. I might have hit a blunt too. You know, so it is what it is, man. But yeah, man, y'all guys going back and forth about this goddamn hair follicle test. And I understand, you know, I seen another guy. I talked to another guy. He told me, well, maybe, maybe uh. Maybe maybe the guy's back was hurting and he didn't have any insurance and um, you know he took one of his wife's Percocets for her that she got from the dentist and, and he didn't have a prescription for it and you know stuff like that you know I understand shit like that does happen but you know mainly mainly for the guys to smoke weed and whatever you know they, they worry about their hair follicle tests. Then we got then we got people talking about whether well, if you if you fail the hair follicle test is not going to go on your DAC report. Man, let me tell you, man. It, it might not go on your DAC report. Maybe it does. Maybe it won't. But I tell you what, it will go on. It's going to go on your conscience. That's what it's going to go on, and you ain't going to never get it off of that. You going you going to know that you wasted your time going to this truck driver orientation when you could have been working somewhere else. You know, making money for you and your family. But, but basically, you just wasted your time coming to not even Melton, but any any truck driving company. And then you know what, man? Mostly mostly all companies are starting to do this hair follicle now, man, because so many people try to cheat on the piss test. You know, hey, I might have cheated on the piss test before, back in the day. But, uh, yeah, and not even for truck driving, man. You know, like office, office jobs, you know, they might do hair follicle testing. It ain't just truck driving. Hey, I know a warehouse job back home. That, that, they do a mouth swab. And I actually know of a place back home, uh, Kelly Tires, Fayetteville, North Carolina. They been, they was doing hair follicle testing like back in 2008 when I tried to get on there. I never got the job, but you know, Kelly Tires in Fayetteville, North Carolina, they do hair follicles. So it ain't just truck driver companies. Yeah, and then the guys going back and forth about, oh, it's, it's, they're not gonna put it on your DAC report. Okay, let me tell you something, man. I put I, I, I put I put an application in with another company not too long ago. They pulled up my DAC report. And they, well, they, they sent me the application first. I filled the application out. They called me back and they was like, on your DAC report, we got Pam Transport showing up on your DAC report, but you didn't put it on your um, job history. Okay, the reason I didn't put it on my job history is because I, I never went to go work for Pam. I never I never. Never been to a Pam terminal, never drove a Pam truck. But I went to Pam's driving school. So they got it on my DAC report that I actually worked for them. And so the lady was like, yeah, it's showing up on your DAC report that you work for Pam Transport. And I was like, well, you know, she was like, did you go to their orientation? I was like, no, I went to their driving school. And she was like, okay. So she was like, I'm going to call them and verify that. And then we're going to call back. And she called me back. Okay, so let me tell you this. So let's say you come to Melton Truck Lines orientation, you failed a hair follicle test, wasted your damn time going through the process of even getting up here. You waste you I say you wasted like two, three weeks of your time coming up here if you know you're gonna fail the motherfucker. So um so yeah, maybe, maybe Melton might not put it on your DAC report, but but the fact that you showed up at Melton Truck Line orientation, what if that shows up on your DAC report? And then, you know, maybe a week later, maybe a month later, maybe a year later, you never know. Maybe you might put an application in at another company and Melton Truck Line shows up. 
but it don't it don't show the reason why you left Melton. So they call you back and they're like, hey, hey, sir, Melton Truck Lines orientation showed up on your DAT report. Uh, did you work there? What you gonna tell them? Uh, oh yeah, I, I was gonna work there, but I decided to quit. What you gonna tell them? You ain't gonna tell them, oh, I failed a hair follow test. You ain't gonna tell them that now. You gonna, you probably tell them some bullshit. When you, well, yeah, I went there, it didn't work out for me, so I, I left. But okay, this company's still gonna verify what you told them. Cause you know, these companies have to protect themselves. They have to protect themselves, man. So anything negative on them, let's, so let's say you fell, a, you fell a drug test at one company, and then this other company hires you, but then you get into an accident or something at this company, and then when the lawyers get to digging, they be like, oh, well, this guy failed a drug test at this company. So, you know, it's going to fall back on that company. So, you know, it, it ain't it ain't no big deal. Man, y'all don't need to be worrying about, oh, if it's going to go on your DAC report or not. You don't need to worry about it. You need to look at the big picture. Yeah, man, because cause, cause what if this company calls up Melton and they ask themselves, they're like, hey, they, cause they're, they're not going to call the orientation supervisor who told you, well, if you failed it, if you failed a hair father test, we're gonna send you home, but we're not gonna put it on your deck. Okay, when this other company calls Melton, they're not gonna call the orientation supervisor. They're not gonna call him. They're gonna call the front office. They're gonna call the person sitting in the front office, the lady sitting in there, you know, drinking her latte or eating granola bars, you know, texting her nanny because the child's sick. You know, they're gonna text that woman, that woman that's doing that, woman or man, whoever's in that office. And you know, they're gonna call her, hey, hey ma'am, how are you? I'm calling from this company. I wanted to verify an employment for this other guy. This woman don't know you. She don't know you, what's she gonna do? She gonna say, okay, fine. What's what's um what's the guy's name? I mean she she's not and she's not gonna be thinking, oh well well, we told him if he failed a hair follicle test. That, that we, we will fire but we won't put it on that. She ain't gonna be thinking that. All she gonna do, type your name in her computer. Uh, excuse me, ma'am, what's his driver license number? Oh, uh, one, two, three, four, five. She gonna type your name, type your driver license number. She gonna pull your record up. And when she looks at it, she gonna be like, oh yeah, we sent him home because he failed a hair follicle test. That's all there is to it. That's what they gonna tell that other company. Man, these companies work together, man. The CEO of CR England, and the CEO of Swift. Man, these guys probably drink coffee together, man. Their, their kids probably go to school with each other, man. Like, like these companies, they're, like you think they're in competition. They ain't in competition. Everybody got a certain lane that they're gonna run in. CR England do what they do. Swift do what they do. Melton do what they do. Maverick do what they do. They're gonna work together. And, and, and it's, it's like a friendly competition. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, of course they're competing because they're businesses. But yeah, man, these, these people on the same page, man. So yeah, the, the, the least, man, that, that shouldn't even be part of your concern if they're going to put the fucking hair follicle test on your DAC report. Nah, that, that should, man, if y'all want to be some grown men, you know, don't worry about shit like that, man. Worry about the big picture. If, if you feel like you dirty, you feel like you got some THC in your hair, THC, whatever you got, poppy seeds, whatever's in the goddamn cocaine, whatever's in there, whatever. You, if you feel like you're dirty, I'm going to tell you how you pass that air follicle test. I'm going to tell you how you pass it. It go back six months. I'm going to tell you what you do. Quit smoking. Quit sniffing powder. Quit popping pills. Whatever you're doing. Whatever you're doing, quit. Hair follicle test go back six months. Go, go without doing a drug for six months. Cut all your damn hair off. See, I got a little bit of hair. Cut, cut it bald. Cut the shit bald. Then give yourself like a, like another three months for the shit to grow out of your damn roots. So that's like nine months altogether. Let go like three more months. Let the shit grow out. Cut the shit again. Wait another month. Then goddamn put the application in. So that's what about ten, about ten, eleven months. Then you are gonna have to go through the process of even getting the orientation. That's what you do. You want to pass a hair follicle like test? That's how you do it. Ain't no, I mean, it might it might be some fancy shampoos out there that can wash the shit out long enough for for you to pass the test. I don't know. That's what I heard, but I don't know. But but the main thing you gotta do is 
Hey man, it's it's some kind of quote that I seen. I don't know what the fuck it is, but if you want to stop getting negative results, stop doing negative things. It's some something like that. My man Cool Cutter, he might he might speak on that subject, man. He he pretty intellectual. But that's how I feel about it. But the only reason I even want to speak on that is because the guys were going back and forth on my video about if it was going to show up or not. I don't know. I didn't have that problem. Because at my last job, I, I couldn't smoke or do drugs at my last job because they always did random piss tests. Random piss tests. If an accident happened, piss tests. You know, they didn't play about that shit. And I'm, I'm too old. I'm 33 years old. I'm too old to get terminated from an employer because of a failed drug test. I'm too old for that. That's that's kind of, that's kind of stuff you do when you like 19, 20. When you when you young, you don't give a fuck. You get my age, you know, you got to really slow down and you know get your priorities in order. But I, I, I'm I'm gonna leave that subject alone. Just make sure y'all y'all keep that in mind, man. Next time y'all want to have a debate about the about a hair father test. Hey man, it's it's plenty of information on Google. Y'all can Google that shit, man. They they even tell you about the the rate that your hair grows a month. I don't know, maybe it's like a quarter inch a month. I don't know, but I know, I know, at the top of your hair, at the at the top of it, that's that's where the most of the drugs are at because your hair is growing. The fucking TAC is in your body, so it's growing. That's why I said go six months, cut your hair off. For like another three months, let it get out your roots and cut it again. That's what you do. But you just wasted 10 months of your time trying to get clean to go to a truck driving company. That's what you did. So if you've been thinking about having a career in, in truck driving and you're watching my video right now, if you feel like any time in the future you want to have a truck driving career, go ahead and put the goddamn, put the motherfucker down right now. Put it down right now. I'm asking you, put it down. I know, I know we all like to get high. It's fun getting high, I know that, but, you know, I mean, if you want a career in, in this truck driving, you know, you can't get high, man. You just can't. Drink a beer. Drink liquor. Just don't get high. Nothing against people to get high, now. I got friends that get high. I'm good friends with them. I got, I got friends that got prescriptions. They, they get medical marijuana. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with getting high, but there's something wrong with it when you want to be a truck driver. Alright, I'm gonna leave that alone. Was, I met him I met a million miler down at uh, Laredo. I can't think of his name, man. He had a light, he had a light, a Carolina blue truck. If y'all know what Carolina blue is, it's it, like mountain mountain truck like Duke Blue. I'm from North Carolina. You know we got Duke Carolina. Duke like dark blue like mountain truck. So this guy got a light blue truck. If y'all on the West Coast, you know you got UCLA. Okay, UCLA got the um, light blue, or maybe Denver Nuggets light blue. He had a, he had a truck that that was, it was that color blue. So I know, I think he was a Cuban guy. I know he was Hispanic, but I want I want to say he was Cuban. I can't remember his name, but shout him out too, cause he walked up to me. Well, he pulled up to me at uh, Laredo Terminal, and was like, um, "What's up, man? I ain't know who the fuck he was." He was like, "Hey," he was like, "What's up?" I was like, "Yo." I'm like, you sure you got the right person? Like, you looking for me? He was like, yeah, you. I was like, I was like, what's up, man? I'm, I'm thinking I did something wrong, you know. Me and my guy, I'm thinking he looking at my load or some shit. He was like, come here. I was like, all right. And he, he was like, I seen you on YouTube. I said, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, yeah, I'm I, I, I put a little videos up there. And he was like, yeah, man, I like watching you, man. I was like, I was like, appreciate it, man. That means a lot coming from a million miler. But you know, some of them million milers, you know, they got attitudes and shit. Won't even fucking talk to you at the terminal, you know. They park their goddamn truck in the fucking back of the goddamn lot. You know, they don't really fuck with the with the younger guys, you know. Yeah, they were pretty cool though. Yeah, a lot of the mega mile guys, man, they, they don't they don't they don't like to hang around with everybody else. Hell, they don't they don't even hang around with each other. They just they just goddamn drive to the back of the yard and park in the corner. <laughs> That's just how they is, man. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, I'm about to go ahead and wrap this up, man. I got this. Like I said, I got like 800 some miles more. This load I'm supposed to deliver to Tuesday. Tuesday at 830. 
I got 830 miles. The place opens up at 4 a.m. You can pull in anytime you want. So I will have this motherfucker there on Monday. Not Tuesday. I have it there on Monday. My home time is scheduled for Friday. So I plan on getting it there early. Alright, man. Whenever I get some more time, I come back and hit y'all with a with a new video or maybe some low securement or something. But uh lately, man, I just been busting my ass trying to get this shit done. And this, I'm going on 25 minutes right now. So if y'all watch this all the way to the end, I really appreciate y'all tuning in with your boy. Hey, uh, if you ain't never seen me, you know, check out the rest of my videos. Um, like, subscribe, drop a comment. Like I said in my video, um, what was that, Melton Truck, uh, what was that, Visit, what, what that shit was? Visit to Gillette Stadium. If you fuck with me, drop a hell yeah down in the comments. I, I, I'd have been through Austin twice. And both times I went through, I didn't pick no cans of whoop ass up, man. That's I need I need to grab some. Hey, Danny Hague, when you coming up out of Laredo, stop and grab me a couple cans, man, if you don't mind. I need like a, a, a case of, of them whoop asses. Oh, man. But, all right, man, I'm about to sit here and chill. I stopped my clock today. What time am I stopping? 2.19. So what time can I roll? All right, 2.19, that's 14, 24, 19, 12, 19, I can roll tonight. If I can wake up at that time. But we'll see. Flatbed gang. Zachary Powell, you the man, bro. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.